few months ago, we were talking about the New Zealand dollar reaching parity with the Aussie. That was just a couple of months ago. Since then, the Kiwi has been in free fall, particularly lately. So what does it mean for the economy and how will it impact businesses and consumers? With me now, AMP's chief economist, Bevan Graham. Bevan, thanks for joining us this morning. It was, to be Pleasure, precise, um, on the 5th of April this year, the Kiwi was at 99.8%. Um, to the Australian, and now we're at what about 88.8? Why the why the free fall? Why has it dropped so quickly? Oh, look, there, look, there's a whole lot of factors in terms of why, you know, ex an exchange rate is, is where it is. And, and, you know, we have had a very strong uh, exchange rate recently, largely because the New Zealand economy mm. uh, has been performing um, so well. Um, but look, you know, precisely against the Australian dollar, um, we went through a period there where uh, the Reserve Bank of Australia was easing monetary policy. Uh, interest rates here in New Zealand were on hold at a, at a globe, relatively globally high level. Yep. Um, and and so that's why we saw the New Zealand dollar stronger. And then, of course, mid-April, uh, the Reserve Bank of Australia had pretty much finished their easing cycle. And the Reserve Bank of New Zealand here signalled that the next move was probably a cut in interest rates. And so it was really those rel that relative monetary policy cycle against Australia that's seen, uh, that's seen the, uh, the Kiwi Aussie down. All right. So this obviously in the short term is going to affect people who are holidaying in the slightly longer term, people who are purchasing things. And we'll talk about that in a moment. Because as this sure. has been happening, so the American American economy has been strengthening and people are gravitating towards that. So for some ideas there against the US dollar, um, six months ago we were at 95, 96. Now we're at, uh, no, sorry, six months ago we were at um, about 80 and now we're at 68. So again, That's right. uh, a very quick fall against the American as well. And, and, and look, you know, there's two. We've got to keep remembering, Paul. There's two sides to every exchange rate story. And remember, you know, um, America's been printing money, uh, yeah. which has essentially been debasing their exchange rate. So while it's looked like we've been very strong against the US dollar, say last year, uh, it was actually the, the fact that the US dollar was very weak. Mm. Uh, and then as the US started, oh, sorry, stopped printing money and started talking about the prospects of interest rate increases, we saw the US dollar rise. That saw us. Uh, fall against uh, against that. Right. So, so the first half of that fall, Paul, was, was really um, a recovery in the US dollar. Mm -hmm. More recently, again, since mid-April, since the Reserve Bank changed its guidance on monetary policy, it's been more about New Zealand dollar weakness. All right. And there'll be many people, Bevan, saying that the New Zealand dollar is just getting closer now to its true worth, that it was, that it was inflated. So let's talk about what this means for exporters and so arguably for jobs. This is good news. It, look, it, it is good news. Good news for exporters. The exchange rate's been uh, has been too high, uh, and that's put the uh, the external sector of the economy under uh, considerable pressure. So, you know, so we've had a two-speed economy, Paul. You know, yep. we've had domestic demand running running pretty hot, uh, but we've had the external sector um, under uh, under pressure. Okay. So, you know, I think I think we're going to see a better balance uh, going forward. All right. So, if it's good for exporters, um, the opposite is true for consumers. Products uh, sourced from overseas and indeed for companies who source raw materials from overseas, things are going to get more expensive. Yep. Which direction is this likely to go in? Well, look, you're absolutely right. Again, you know, two sides to every story, really, isn't there? That's what makes economics so fascinating, I mm -hmm. guess, isn't it? You know, that, that certainly, you know, consumers will be paying more for, uh, for imported goods. So, you know, it's not a one-for-one -one relationship uh, in that there are competitive pressures out there in the economy as well. So, you know, you think about cars being imported from sure. Japan. Petrol. You know, that exchange rate's down, prices go up, but, you know, there'll be a limit to how much prices can actually, can actually go up. So, Bevan, the big question here is which way is is it going to go over the next month or so? Is it going to continue to drop the New Zealand dollar? Yeah, look, I, I think we'll see further weakness in the New Zealand dollar, but 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 it will it will vary compared to which exchange rate okay. you're talking about. You know, because you know we just talked about there that there is a level of the of the exchange rate that you can think of as being fair or fair value or about right given right. our fundamentals, and we're pretty close to that at the moment against the American dollar, uh, close uh, to that against the British pound, but probably still overvalued against the Aussie dollar, okay. uh, the yen, uh, and the euro. Right, so Bevan. more room probably for those ones to move. Bevan Graham, AMP Chief Economist, thank you very much for joining us. So it could be a little bit more softening in the New Zealand dollar yet. Yeah.